finally, a win for the Raptors, 96-91 over the Detroit Pistons. And we talked about it in the last video. We needed a good first quarter and a good finish. That's what we said. Let's break this baby down and see how they did. Well, the first quarter, the offense was rolling. 31 points. The ball was moving like crazy, getting fantastic looks, and knocking down your shots. You score 31 in the first quarter. You're feeling great. And the unbelievable defense by the Raptors, only giving up 18 in that first. You're up by 13 heading into the second quarter. You're feeling fantastic. And then you fall apart. Raptors give up 20, 33 in that second quarter and only score 23. And it's only a three-point game at the half. So a great first quarter, an abysmal second quarter. But the difference between this game and the last, what, two games? You've got the lead at the half. Even though they made a run, you had a big enough lead to stay it, to stay with the lead at the half. That's what we talked about in the first in last night in the last video. Needing that good start so you can not sit back, but have a lead to work with, and they did. Now, the third quarter didn't go so great either. You only scored 19, you gave up 22, but again, the defense was there. You only gave up 22. You didn't let them throw a huge third quarter against and then get then be down 10 heading into the fourth. You stayed tight defensively, and you got the job done, and it was tied at the end of the third quarter. And in the fourth, the Raptors at some point, and it wasn't, long, it wasn't far into the fourth quarter, uh, the Raptors were down four. 79-75. And we're thinking, oh no, no, please, please, this can't be happening. And then the Raptors of the last few games happened. What do I mean by that? They went, if I'm not mistaken, on a 17-4 run to get the big lead up there. And the Raptor fans, the Raptors themselves, feeling great. Now they make a late push, but we had the lead and they couldn't come back from it. Sound familiar? Yeah, again, I'll say it again. We're on the opposite side of that. We got the victory. We had the lead. They crawled back, but we put a stop to it. And that was that, all right? Now, did the team play a great game? No. This is not a game that you're going to say, yep, we're going to look at this uh, game one of round one of the playoffs and say we got to play like that. That is not going to happen with this game because you only shoot 42% from the field. They only shoot 42% from the field as well. 36% from three, better, and you knock down 11 threes, much better. 74% uh, from the line, they were only 47% from the free throw line. And I'm thinking that is credits to Andre Drummond, who was one of three, and Ish Smith, who was one of four. So again, you got some help from the free throw line. You out-rebounded them by six, courtesy of mostly uh, Jonas Valanciunas. 12 offensive boards to their 11. That's huge because when you have Andre Drummond, I mean, the, rebound, the, the, the boards are going to be all over for you. I mean, you're going to do an unbelievable job grabbing them. But Jonas Valanciunas battled hard all game. And... We talked about the last video, only having 20 assists, but the offense wasn't cooking. Well, today, 24 assists. Like I said, that first quarter, the ball was humming. It was gorgeous. It was unbelievable. Uh, they had 14 steals. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and eight blocks to their seven. But the reason this game was so close, and the big reason for that huge second quarter push by the Pistons to cut that lead to three, was the amount of stupid stupid turnovers in this game for the Raptors. Now, they had to force some. I'm not going to say it was all Raptors being uh, mental mistakes, but or it, was, it wasn't just the Pistons, you know, being in the right place at the right time. It wasn't just luck. They did a good job. However, the Raptors were not careful with the basketball. 20 turnovers to leading to 19 points, and 11 of those 20 turnovers, I, I don't know if that's exact, uh, were in that second quarter. Second, or so he's in the first half, but mostly in the second quarter because that's where everything was falling apart. But again, you had that lead and you were able to hold it. Not what we were used to over the last few games. Serge Ibaka, OG, didn't have great nights. Both guys with only two points. However, OG, OG only took two shots, knocked one down, um, and didn't take a three. Serge Ibaka, however, one of five and 0 of one from three. 
didn't have his shots. But OG, I know it was a, a few plays he made. One block at one end, and then comes down the floor and dishes it off. A beautiful bounce pass, either JV or Pirtle. I'm not sure who it was underneath the basket. Just gorgeous for two points. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, like I said earlier, he had a monster night. 17 points, 16 rebounds. Put that into perspective, he had the same amount as Andre Drummond. That's big. When everyone's like, oh, you know, we need a rebounding machine. Trade JV for Drummond. You didn't need to. JV was unbelievable. Offensively and percentage-wise shooting, eh, maybe not so much. 5 of 12 uh, from the field. And uh, 1 of 2 from 3. Of course, he's knocking down threes. JV. Unbelievable. And 6 of 6 from the free throw line. Andre Drummond was 1 of 3. JV, it's nice having a big man that can shoot free throws. It's beautiful. Kyle Lowry, you know what? It's nice to see. He struggled early in this game. I think at one point he was 1 of 7 from the field. Ended the game 5 of 14. So he ended up shooting 35%. 4 of 10 from 3, 40%. Hey, that's fantastic. Plus 8 on the floor. 4 of 5 in the free throw line. Big thing for him. 8 rebounds, 5 assists. He had a big game. Great job by Kyle Lowry. And DeMar DeRozan, as much as uh, Avery Bradley was just all over him. Not giving him any room to work. DeMar DeRozan still put up 17 points. And the great thing for him, five assists in this game. That's the new Mark DeMar DeRozan. When he knows his shot isn't falling as good as it is, he'll give it to somebody who is knocking down their shots. 7 of 15 from the field, 46%. 3 of 4 from the, from, uh, the fee, uh, from the free throw line, 0 of 2 from 3. But the big punch in this game, and probably, again, Kudos to the DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry assists. C.J. Miles, 21 points off the bench. And, uh, or excuse me, 20, yeah, 21 points off the bench, four boards. I mean, he was dynamite. 7 of 16 shooting, only 43%. However, 5 of 12 from three. So him and Kyle Lowry combined, nine of the 11 threes. Right? I mean, they were dynamite. Those two guys were knocking down their shots. Those are your two main three-point threats. You can throw DeMar in there to sprinkle in a three. And JV got one. Who else got one? Norman Powell knocked down a three as well. Those were your three-point shooters uh, for today. But the, de the defense by DeLon Wright, Siakam, Pirtle, all those guys, they did their thing. Now, Siakam was a minus two on the floor, but everybody else was a positive look. Like I said... This is not going to be a game that is a beautiful win that you kiss to the stars and say, Mwah, that was gorgeous, because it wasn't. But it's a win against a team you might possibly be facing in the playoffs. But you look at this game, and the way it played out, it's exactly what you were looking for to a certain extent. We talked in the last video about needing a good start and a good end, and the Raptors did just that, and they got the victory. You know? That's just, what did other teams do against us to beat us? A good end and a great first half. And they did that, and we couldn't come back. We did that today, got the job done. Now, offensively, we were a little shaky in the second, third, and fourth quarter. Our best quarter, 23 points, and that was in the second and the fourth. Not good enough, and you're playing San Antonio next. Excuse me, at the Air Canada Center on Friday night, 7 p.m. tip off there. And then on a back to back, you go to Minnesota, a very good Timberwolves team, 9 o'clock on, on Saturday night. Again, that's going to be a tough stretch, but you got to start one game at a time, and that's at home against the San Antonio Spurs. Ginobili's out from what I can see. Uh, I'm almost guaranteed Kawhi Leonard's going to be hurt because he had the, the uh, quadricep injury, I think it was. So he'll be out. Um, but again, it's not a team you say, oh, Kawhi's not <laughs> easy cakewalk type of win. Look, this team is not a bad team. You can't take them lightly. Last time you played them, if I'm not mistaken, you were in San Antonio and your offense was nowhere to be found. Lately, the offense has been tough to find. You got to shoot the ball against San Antonio, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this game, hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below. Uh, what do you guys think of this game? Who's your player of the game? Would you give it to CJ Miles for the 21 points? Would you give it to Tamar for his 17? Kyle for his great game uh, on both ends of the floor. Uh, would you give it to JV for his monstrous night? I want to hear what you guys have to say. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow night. Leafs edition, as they're in Philly taking on the Flyers, as they really need a win. 
They've lost three in a row now. All three games have been winnable, but they have not won one of them. But it might be good for them to hit the road. Uh, Flyers are a tough team to play no matter no matter what. Every NHL team is tough to play no matter what. So uh, they need to get back in the win column. And we'll talk to you guys Raptors edition as they look to run their win streak up to two Friday night. San Antonio Spurs, Toronto Raptors at the ACC. 7 o'clock tip-off. We'll talk to you guys then.